I'd like to welcome you all in the lecture series of basic electrical engineering. Uh, in this session, I am going to explain the construction of three-phase induction motor with a simple and easy way. Let's understand how about the construction of uh, like a three-phase induction motor. So, three-phase induction motor comprises of two important components. The first one you can see the stator, which is a stationary part where you are going to provide the supply. And another one is actually called a rotor, which is a rotating part of the motor. Uh, one more important thing, the rotor and the stator, which is separated by a small air gap, which is shown in this fashion. So everybody can observe very carefully here. The outer covering we just call like a stator. It's external. We are going to provide the supply here. Uh, then the internally, we have the rotor, which is connected with the shaft also. In between stator and rotor, there is an air gap. So that is actually the construction of rotor. Here you can see the structure of the rotor. It is basically a cylindrical shape and uh, the two like uh, segments has been shorted with uh, an end rings. And even you can see the stator with the stator winding also which is connected. It can be either star connection or delta connection depends on the application whichever you want. Discussion is going on further. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about like a stator. So we'll understand the basics of the stator in this session. It is a fixed part. And basically, it's a hollow construction. is just like a cylindrical structure, which I shown you a bit early. It is made up of with the silicon steel lamination to reduce the eddy current uh, losses. Also, like we can say, like a uh, silicon steel is having less value of hysteresis. So, because of that, hysteresis loss also will be reduced. Similarly, slots on the it has the slots on the inner uh, surface, uh, which is insulated by the copper conductor, which is placed. I mean, uh, suitable insulation has to be provided. Also, like uh, the uh, stator winding, uh, which can be done either like a star connection or delta connection. If I if I am looking for like a high voltage and low current application, obviously I'll go for star connection. Uh, conversely, if I go for like a high current and low voltage system, I would like to go for delta connection. Depends on the application. Uh, like, like the rotating magnetic field is going to be provide uh, going to be generated as soon as you provide the supply at the stator side. So I'll discuss detail on what is rotating magnetic field in the coming session. So you can verify the stator construction. Okay, this is the way how the stator is observed, uh, how the stator, stator look like. Moving further, I wanted to discuss about the rotating part that is called a rotor. The rotor is placed the inner part. Okay, stator is outside and rotor is inside and uh, it will rotate due to the rotating magnetic field. We already discussed the concept of like a rotating magnetic field generation uh, because like uh, afterwards I discussed about like a Faraday's loss of an induction motor and in the coming video I'm going to talk about what is the impact of rotating magnetic field. So how the rotating magnetic field is provided. What is the mathematical modeling of rotating magnetic field I'm going to discuss in the coming session in a simple and easy fashion. So basically according to the rotor construction there are two types of induction motor. One is called a, a squirrel cage rotor or squirrel cage induction motor. Other one is known as slippering induction motor. Squirrel cage induction motors are more, most commonly employed and slip, slippering induction motors are required wherever you want to have like adjusting the starting torque. right? And it is also known as wound rotor construction or wound rotor induction motor. So I would like to talk about like a squirrel cage induction motor and a slippering induction motor separately. First of all, let us uh, see the uh, construction, how it is going to be like look like. So in the left side, you can see the squirrel cage induction motor. See, you can see the copper bar, which is short at each other. Okay, which is already fixed one actually. Where uh, like a bound rotor, we can add, keep on, we can keep on adding uh, the resistance to improve the starting torque. That's a peculiarity. But efficiency and performance varies with respect to this motor. I let you know, let us see the construction, how it look like. I would like to talk about what do you mean by uh, the, the squirrel cage motor, which is most commonly employed. So it is made up of with the copper or aluminum bars, as you can see, which is shorted at each end, end rings. You can see the end ring at the left and right portion, which is uh, just like a ring, which is actually having the dark colored one. Both the ends of these rings are shorted by the copper bars. You can see the right the rotor conductor, which is made up of with the copper. So each and every line which is shorted, it is very clear, which is already mentioned here. Uh, it resembles uh, the skin of the squirrel as if have you seen have you ever seen the skin uh, the skin of the squirrel please observe and uh, the structure will be closely similar to the skin of the squirrel that's what it is known as squirrel cage induction motor that's a pretty interesting fact which is a closed loop circuit you can see everything is closed and uh, which is connected through end rings uh, shorted by copper conductors the peculiarity is it has a uh, less starting torque and uh, it is completely maintenance free and the construction is very rugged and it is widely used. 
where the efficiency is very high. Applications, lathe machine, drilling machine, uh, in the solar water pumping system and industrial drives. Because of these attractive features, we'll go for squirrel cage induction motor. But the setback is uh, like a less starting torque. That's a major setback. Yes. Is there any remedy for uh, other alternative? Is there any other alternative? Of course, yes. But that is rarely used. Yes. I'll be talking about more on the second type of classification that is the slippering rotor. It is also known as wound rotor induction motor. So you can see the schematic diagram of bound rotor. Okay, it is made up of with the slip rings, right? Even you can add the external resistance by connecting with the slip rings. Why external resistance has been added? Because if the torque of induction motor is directly proportional to external resistance. As you are going to add more number of external resistance, of course, the torque also will be getting very high. Uh, see, a slip ring induction motor is made up of with the cylindrical laminated core. Uh, like uh, it, we have... Uh, three phase uh, like windings placed on its slot, which is very clearly observed. Uh, the winding is star connected, and it's uh, like you can see winding is star connected, and which is connected three slip rings. You can see the slip ring number one, two, three. The winding is merely a star connection. Okay, so carbon brushes rest on the rings, like uh, which allowing the external resistance. The, like uh, uh, carbon brushes will help us to connect the external resistance, right? In the DC generator, you might have studied the carbon brushes. Here also, we are using the brushes, right? Uh, and uh, also, like it is uh, suitable for like a better speed control and higher starting torque application. The major setback is we are using the carbon brushes. We are keep on adding the external resistance. As the external resistance is very high, the losses also will be high. As the losses are very high, the efficiency comes down. These are the major setbacks you should understand. What are the applications? Yes, which is used for the lift, cranes, and the conveyor belt, where high starting torque is very desirable. Even EV also, we can up, uh, suggest this uh, slippering induction motor. But the drawback of less efficiency, that's a major headache uh, for using this uh, slippering induction motor. Also, we can say the construction-wise, it is a bit costly. I would like to summarize my session. We discussed about these are the two important components. One is stator, other one is rotor. And there are two types of construction according to the rotor. One is uh, like a squirrel cage rotor. Other one is actually called a slippering rotor. Squirrel cage induction motor, the peculiarity is it is simple application where suitable for simple application where the uh, starting torque is very less, but efficiency is superior. Uh, in the opposite side, slippering induction, induction motor, which is like a suitable for high speed control and high starting torque. However, efficiency drops down. These are the uh, like a... Uh, major construction of a uh, three-phase induction motor. I would like to ask you one thing. If you have any queries, please uh, communicate me through the, uh, the, the comment box. I'm happy to answer back. Thank you very much for watching this video. Happy learning. Have a great day. If you are watching our channel first time, I request you to subscribe and kindly share with the stakeholders, those who are working in this same.